Hi everyone, my name is Mateus, and today we're going to talk about video games. Announced today by the official Cyberpunk 2077 Twitter profile, a special episode of Night City Wire is coming on Tuesday, September 6th at 5 p.m. Central European Summer Time. The event will be focused on new details about the game and the Netflix's anime, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. The profile also posts a video which shows player character V wearing the same jacket that can be seen in the upcoming anime, which indicates that we'll see Edge Runners content in the game. After reportedly being raided in Taiwan, the Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim Anniversary Edition has now been classified in Europe too. As spotted by Nintendo Pal, the game has been rated by Peggy, which for some reason lists it as releasing for Nintendo's console on August 31, 2022. If the title is coming to Switch, it could be confirmed this month during an unannounced but anticipated Nintendo Direct presentation. Shin Megami Tensei, Persona 3 Portable has recently been rated for PC in Korea. The game has been rated, available for 15 years old due to minor elements of drugs, violence, and money. The specific reasons stated by the Game Management Committee in Korea include limited sensationalism, exposure of the body, and limited violence, expression of partial blood. Game Informer shared a new gameplay footage of God of War Ragnarok. The video, which is 1 minute and 39 seconds long, showed Kratos using the two new Dauntless and Stonewall arm shields, and Atreus using his arrow. The new triangle button function, called Weapon Signature Moves, was also showed. Microsoft confirms new Xbox Game Pass friends and family plan and revealed its pricing in Ireland and Colombia. The new subscription will cost €21.99 per month in Ireland, and 49,900 COP in Colombia, and will also allow Xbox Game Pass members to share with up to four other friends or family members who live in the same country. Currently we are piloting this plan in Colombia and the Republic of Ireland. Future countries slash regions might be added in the next months, says Microsoft in a FAQ. Microsoft hasn't announced pricing for the rest of Europe, the UK, or the US yet, but it's likely to be around $25 per month for Xbox Game Pass friends and family in the US. The director of Until Dawn and the Quarry, Will Biles, revealed he's working on another full-scale horror title, which is tentatively planned for release by 2026. Speaking to VGC in a recent interview, Supermassive Director confirmed it was his intention to continue creating full-scale narrative adventures with the same genre. I do like the luxury of being able to really explore characters and you get that with a longer story, he explained. It annoys some people, because they get bored with it, but I really like the fact you can go in-depth with the characters and explore relationships in a way that's harder on a shorter story. Specifically discussing his next project, Biles said it would be equivalent in size to this year's The Quarry, which was published by 2K, and suggested it could deviate from the teen horror explored in his last two releases. We've started working on the next game, he said. I can't really tell you very much at all about it, but we have started. Again, it's the same sort of horror genre, we're sticking to that. It's equivalent in size to The Quarry, and that's about as much as I can say without giving too much away. He added, potentially we might be a little bit like. I don't know how far we can stretch the teen horror thing out further, because especially when we try to stir it up, the number of surprises you can add to that becomes limited. The Dark Pictures explores hundreds of variants of the horror genre. What we're looking at now, and I can't tell you exactly what it is, is a bit of a diversion away from that sort of standard, but it's still very much classic horror. Asked if fans will have to wait the seven years that passed between Until Dawn and the Quarry to play the game, Biles indicated he was planning on a much shorter turnaround of about four years. No, it certainly won't be the seven years it took between Until Dawn, he said. It will be 2025, or maybe 2026. 
Supermassive was recently fully acquired by Danish entertainment company Nordisk, and claimed that the sale will give it more ammunition with which to create its projects. Hogwarts Legacy will not feature the famous Harry Potter Sport Quidditch. As spotted by Upcomer, the FAQ section of the game's website has been quietly updated and now reads, Quidditch is not playable in Hogwarts Legacy. However, this doesn't mean the end of flying, as you'll be able to zip around Hogwarts on your broom between wizarding lessons and race with other students. Broom flight for traversal and broom race challenges are part of the game. Players can also fly brooms to explore new and familiar locations surrounding Hogwarts Castle. If you're not a natural flyer, there's help at hand as players can take a flying class to master their broomstick flying skills. More Assassin's Creed Mirage details seemingly leak ahead of full reveal. According to serial Assassin's Creed leaker J0 Nathan, Assassin's Creed Mirage will feature one city, Baghdad, which will include four individual districts, each with its own boss. The title, which is reportedly taking a back-to-basics approach for the series, will feature the return of throwing knives, hiding places on rooftops, and a dense amount of NPCs, it's claimed. Mirage will reportedly attempt to recreate the crowd density of 2014's Assassin's Creed Unity, which took place during the French Revolution and featured a massive number of NPCs on screen at once. Splitgate developer, 1047 Games announced today that its free-to-play portal-based arena shooter, Splitgate, will end feature development following the release of its next and final battle pass. Due to the fact that the game was released over a year ago, July 27, 2021, many fans were caught off guard by the announcement. The developer also revealed that is working on a new game set in the Splitgate universe. After careful consideration and much deliberations, the 1047 Games team has determined that in order to build the game fans deserve and to build it in a way that isn't trying to retrofit and live operate an existing product we are ending feature development of Splitgate, read a portion of a message tweeted from the official Splitgate Twitter account earlier today. Splitgate achieved a level of success that we could not have anticipated and that few indie games are fortunate enough to reach, the post continued. That initial success brought an opportunity to turn what started as a college dorm dream project into a AAA game that could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with shooters from the biggest publishers in the industry. But this also meant that as we've brought on top-tier talent from across the industry, We've spent a lot of our time trying to rework old content and systems that were originally built by a handful of people. The post stated that the current status of the game's development is akin to bailing water out of a boat, while also trying to keep everyone who bought a ticket to board our ship happy, while also trying to turn our boat into a rocket ship. Thankfully, the team at 1047 Games came prepared for questions, following up the first tweet with a second one containing links to a blog post regarding the future of the game, a FAQ page, the official Splitgate Discord server, and the game's website. In short, no, Splitgate servers are not being shut down. Yes, the game will continue to receive regular bug fixes and server maintenance. Yes, there will be another battle pass the Splitgate Infinite Battle Pass and it will be available free of charge. That's all the news for today, Friday, September 2, 2022. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. The links to all the subjects discussed in this video are available in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.